Hi there behind your screen. Um, my name is Hans and I'm just back from a coaching session at a local syndication partner. I had a few sales guys coming up to me with questions uh, concerning uh, competitive solutions to Office 365. They bumped into customers who uh, come up with iCloud or Dropbox or a Google platform or even the free Microsoft platform. So here's some arguments to use and then some storylines to adopt if you're in, in that same position. So number one, the customer, after you have explained CloudOffice or talked about CloudOffice says, hey, it's great for me. I'm an Apple user and I'm using the iCloud. Okay, answer number one, hey, that's very cool because now yeah, as such you know about the cloud, so I don't have to explain you what the cloud is. And tell me, um, how do you currently uh, make documents? What kind of software do you use? Chances are that Microsoft Office will be the answer. How do you share your documents with uh, non-Apple users? Because uh, you need an Apple ID, you need an additional login. Uh, you need also to have the tools and the platform to, uh, to connect to it, so it's, tell me about it. Very soon you will bump into limitations with regard to non-iOS users. And then again, CloudOffice definitely makes the difference. Group number two, the ones who come back with, hey, I'm using Dropbox or anything else to centralize my data and back it up, so it's okay. But it's very interesting again that you use Dropbox, dear customer, um, so you know about the cloud as well. Um, but is Dropbox able to uh, maintain versions? Uh, can you collaborate on files or is it just like a parking area where you put files and then synchronize them? Um, tell me, how, how do you use it? Um, and then again, Dropbox uh, also implies an additional login, uh, whereas my cloud office or Office 365 is actually just um, a solution that requires one login for my mail, my contacts, my calendar, my files, and on top of it, it offers versioning, it offers real-time online collaboration with all the applications included. So definitely a winner. A third group of users may tell you that they are on the free Microsoft account solution, the OneDrive of seven gigabytes, the Hotmail, and the uh, calendaring function. And over here, it's very simple, you know. If you would place your Dropbox um, uh, or, or let's say your OneDrive on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of functionality and Dropbox would be 2 and CloudOffice or Office 365 would be 10 then I think uh, the Microsoft free solution is somewhere on 4, 4.5, maybe 5. Uh, the OneDrive itself does not include versioning, does not include alerts, does not include workflow settings, does not include any advanced functionality apart from parking the files and sharing them to a very limited extent. The calendaring function is also a very personal one. It does not have any professional characteristics. It cannot be shared easily. And your email is also a very basic email without features that are typically needed for uh, business and professional users. So CloudOffice over here again is definitely the winner. And then we have the users that are on uh, who are on uh, Google. Well, with Google, my favorite question is, well, tell me a little bit uh, first of all, how do you work offline? What software do you use on your computer? Uh, chances are, again, that it will be Microsoft Office, so then we will win with the premium editions uh, offering Office on five devices. And my second favorite question over here is, how do you share documents with people that are outside your organization? And how do you uh, make these documents available uh, on other platforms uh, in offline circumstances um, because, okay, I know you can use Google Chrome and, and some add-ins, but if I'm a, an Apple user or a Windows user, how does it work? Very soon again, you will bump into limitations of that platform and you will have enough arguments to talk about Cloud Office, aka Office 365. So the final question you can ask is, hey, how comfortable do you feel today with the solution that you have uh, on a scale of 10? Um, zero being not satisfied at all, 10 being fully satisfied. So a 10, it's very unlikely people will give a 10. They will mostly give something between um, maybe seven, eight or nine. And then my favorite question is, hey, that's cool. And now tell me, what would it require for you to bring it up to one point higher? And then you will hear exactly what these people are missing. And most of the time, as practice shows, these are features that are in our Office 365 solution. So we have enough beef to chew on, enough beef to convince our customers to adopt CloudOffice and drop everything else. So I wish you 
the best of luck with styling uh, Office 365 and most of all, a lot of fun. Take care and see you next time. Bye.